so, what would you do to reach the world's most powerful office? Ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States. The race for the White House is on. We've had bitter presidential campaigns for centuries. How far are you prepared to go? Lincoln did some devious things. There had never been a candidate like Andrew Jackson. Will you turn friends into enemies? It's not a time to be polite, Bill Clinton. You jump out there now. Kennedy had a major foe. Will you break your own rules? You attack your opponent's strength. Who's the risk here? Do the ends ever justify the means? What is this doing to American democracy? Politics is no holds barred. These are the backroom deals, punishing attacks, and ruthless deeds that seal victory. Son of a bitch. You want to win or not? Race for the White House, Sunday, March 6th on CNN. Now, a sneak peek of the new CNN original series, Race for the White House. For eight years, you've been a heartbeat away from the Oval Office. A loyal vice president. Biding your time waiting your turn. You know the path to power. And you think you know the rules. But what happens when you discover you don't even know how to play the game? The 1960 America, land of the free, is terrified of the Red Menace. America was very unsettled. The Soviets had the bomb, and because of that, there was uncertainty there, there was fear. America has confidence in its president, father of the nation in World War II, Dwight D. Eisenhower. But even presidents have to retire. Who can step into his shoes? Many think this is the man, Eisenhower's vice president for eight years, Richard Milhouse Nixon. Richard Nixon is well known to the American people. Nixon's not scared of the Russians, as Soviet Premier Nikita Khrushchev finds out at a Moscow trade fair. It wasn't supposed to be much. It was supposed to be just a meeting, but it turned into a confrontation. There must be a free exchange of ideas. Capitalism versus communism. Back and forth and back and forth, jabbing with the fingers. The words didn't matter. It was the images that mattered. He was presidential. He seemed ready for the White House. Meanwhile, traveling through the bleak Wisconsin landscape, there is another man who believes he's destined for the White House. He's young, he's inexperienced, and he's almost unknown. Senator Kennedy is now in front of the Fort Atkinson Saving and Loan Association. His name is John F. Kennedy, and he aims to win the Wisconsin Democratic primary. You would go to a plant gate. How are you this morning? And you'd stand right there. Uh, my job would be shake hands with, with Jack Kennedy. Nice to see you. Shake hands with Teddy. Good to see you. Bobby. Bob Kennedy. We worked hard. But I come here today as a candidate in the Wisconsin primary. John F. Kennedy. Kennedy is smart. He knows that if he can prove himself a vote winner here in the primaries, the Democratic Party will have to take him seriously as a candidate for president. This was a new way of campaigning. This was a new way of becoming the nominee. First of all, he's going to have to be Hubert Humphrey. Hubert Humphrey, Democrat senator from Minnesota, is confident he'll win Wisconsin hearts. 
Well, let me tell you, I've been working for the dairy farmer ever since I set foot in the Senate of the United States. So we knew we had a tough job to win. It was a monumental challenge. Kennedy does have one advantage, being a Kennedy. His father, Joseph, rich, powerful, and the former ambassador to Great Britain, has always wanted a son for president. Politics was definitely a family affair. You had a large family who was out there saying, we are supporting our brother or our brother-in-law. And that, I think, it was a very compelling picture. And if the might of the Kennedys isn't enough, then there's JFK's ever-present, ever-glamorous wife, Jackie. You, you put the two together, and people are just in awe. Uh, really, they were the Beatles before the Beatles. And for the icing on the campaign cake, Frank Sinatra serenades Wisconsin with a special version of High Hopes. So I started singing, and Kennedy said, it's never been sung like that before. It doesn't happen very often when a Billboard number one singer uh, decides to use his talents to sell a political campaign. Glamour, show business, and family, who can compete with that? Not Hubert Humphrey. Humphrey recognized what he was facing. He called himself the corner drugstore compared to a chain. The Kennedys were a chain, powerful, big. How did you, ma'am? And he was passing out palm cards uh, on the streets. I'm Senator Humphrey. This doesn't work too good either. It, it just didn't work. A desperate Humphrey lunges for Kennedy's Achilles heel. JFK is a Catholic, and no Catholic has ever been elected president. There was a very strong anti-Catholic uh, feeling. JFK's team fight back. It's bare knuckle time as Kennedy aide Paul Corbin comes out swinging. How are we doing? Paul Corbin was a political hack. We got what we need here. He was also a dirty trickster. He would stop at nothing. Come on. Corbin arranged to have a lot of anti-Catholic literature shipped into Wisconsin. So right away, a lot of voters are offended. And they think that the awful, bigoted stuff is coming from Hubert Humphrey. Corbin's dirty trick works. Thousands of incensed Catholics get up and vote for Kennedy. We won. It was tough, but we won. After victory in Wisconsin and a landslide in West Virginia, Kennedy heads straight for the nomination. But the Democratic bosses are out to get him. In my own mind, the, the first knife in Kennedy's back is plunged by former President Harry Truman. Senator Kennedy, are you certain that you are quite ready for the role of president in January 1961? Do not think it was a foregone conclusion that Kennedy would be the nominee after West Virginia. He was the dark horse candidate. He was the outsider. He was not Washington's choice. 